Hey everybody, thanks for joining us again here at Cedar Culture. I'm Gary, this is Eric. This week we are smoking the Salvation by Black Label Trading Company. This is one Eric was really excited for. This is definitely his brand. Um, all over the place again, like always, we talked about replacements for Alex Trebek now that he filmed his last episode. We talked about keeping your sticks at a proper humidity, being dry in the winter, and we compared some dad jokes. All this and more coming at you. We are Cedar Culture. Kick back and relax, it's time to shoot the shit. Hanging out with the broskies, Gary and Eric. Let the ash go long and the combo stay pure. That's Cedar Culture. That's Cedar Culture. That's Cedar Culture. Let's bundle these leaves and burn them and suck on them. What's your stance on peeing in the shower? Dude, you know what's funny? We just had a family conversation about this. Did you really? Yes. Today Wait, at lunch. Seriously? Yes. Like, was this an intervention style? No. Um, um, my daughter brought it up because she's in that stage. And my wife was like, yeah, sometimes. And then, you know, I was like, yeah. I mean, I think guys all kind of pee in the shower. But... Um, I find myself doing it less in the house I bought. Like I was more like the, the the weirdo at like the gym, like peeing like in the shower quick if I had to. It kills athlete's foot, so it's good. You pee on your feet in the gym shower. And is what in they case say. you get stung by a jelly, it's like I'm preemptively helping for <laughs> pre jellyfish <laughs> thing. You know. Um, That's funny. I don't know why. Oh, you know why? Why I thought of it is because when I was in the shower earlier, I realized I actually like kind of like peeing in the shower. Are, okay, are you before? Are are you before or after? Are you start or finish? What do you mean? Like, do you wash, then pee, then shut the water off, or is no. it the first thing you do? No, it's like yeah, I would do it like in the beginning. early on. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But it's like something freeing about it. Yeah, it's like you own why. it. I mean, hey, we we rock you know, outside backyard, peas all the time. Yeah, my know? backyard but, is a pee haven. Um, all right, dude. I'm a, so so you're saying. Um, we need to do an episode that's not. Uh, oh, Gary's really excited. This I one, know this is this is, an, this is, this an, is Eric. Eric excited. Yeah. Um, we've both had this. You've had you've had Salvation. I've, I've Black had a label few of them. Black I Label have. Trading Company. It's been a little bit though. Me too. Um, Only had one this summer, um, and I don't think I was retrohaling really well back then. So I don't like. I'm excited to kind of become like it. a bougie bitch with the uh, retrohaling. I just dude. But I don't know if you like can retrohale like I can. I didn't but I just say get, that. I get I said, so many more notes. I didn't. I get so I many didn't. more notes now. I'm telling you, man. You're not on my note level. Um, really cool foot band. I mean, this has these it labels does. are awesome. Well, their whole brand, right? So, so Black Label is like a, a, is one of a few sister brands under the Oveja Negra, which is Black Sheep, and like so Oveja Negra, their factory. It's this. It's like uh, Emilio. It's Blackworks and one or two. Blackworks Studio does the really cool pop culture sticks they do too. Killer B is one of them that's Boondock. under. They do yeah, the exactly. Um, so really cool stuff. Um, I like. I have one of their hats. I think I have yeah. one of their stickers. Like I, their branding's kind of cool. In a little bit of like a Ed Hardy, maybe a little too affliction kind of way. It but does. it works for me. It, it, it is, and I totally see it because I mean the salvation of the praying hands. Um, you got the old English writing, but it's, um, it's, it's one rhinestone short of affliction. Um, Ed Hardy, maybe a little shine down or like hinder playing in the background, but their sticks are so good. So doing, and the dude is like James Brown, like the guy. I know and his name just, is James Brown. He looks Brown. cool. Like he looks like a, a, just a cool dude. So the only few sticks I've had, I've had a Boondock, and um, just last night I had the collab from Blackworks and um, Leaf by Oscar. I did the Leaf by James, which kind of makes sense now, hearing your background that you were talking about, because there's a sheep on the label. Yep. Yeah. So. Um, I think that's their late, like their logo, or I think that's like the sheep head, the same sheep head that's on their factory. I think. And I'm going to tell you, man, flavor-wise, the, the Leaf by James, like, I will definitely smoke it again. It was really, really good. I mean, very reminiscent of the um, Leaf by Oscar, but I feel like totally just sweet tobacco throughout. Um, the draw stunk, and I was way too lazy. It was just tight. I was way uh, too lazy to uh, go get my draw I don't know why tool. for a second, I, like, my, my head, when you said the draw stunk, I'm like, what did it smell like? <laughs> but... Um, do you have any kind of just first thoughts on when you like this? I think, well, this, for me, mine is drawn fantastic. This is drawn absolutely fine. It was, you know, just for reference, it was the, the one I smoked last night. Yes, had a, no. I had yeah. a bed draw just so the people out there aren't uh, confused. Um, 
you know, I'm interested because I'm not the biggest Habano guy, but this is a sun-grown Habano, so I'm kind of... Which is not me at right. all. It's not, you're like dark, oily, but I'm going like to tell you, this, like first, first hit, like everything I've said and I think black works is like pepper bomb. That's what I black think label. at least. Black label is pepper bomb. Right. And even when like saw this, it was like spice lover's dream. But I'm not like from first light. That's not what I, I wouldn't say, ooh, spice lover's dream. No, but there's something, you know what it is? It's not super spicy, but it's almost uh, for like a sun-grown kind. I, I don't know, maybe the, like you don't expect it maybe, the, the spice, the little spice that's there, and it's layered on top of a nice, light, like iced tea sweetness kind of thing. I was going to say, I got and tea leaf, I got works. hay, yeah. I got, and like, yes, there's an undertone of spice, but I wouldn't be like, Whoa, knock your granny socks off, you know? But uh, I'll knock your granny socks off. I'm excited I'm to, dry to smoke this thing. <laughs> so, <laughs> so. so do you know James Brown's like background or anything? Was he just a cigar lover, got into the game? And, I, you know, I don't Because no. it's recent. 2013, the company yeah. started. So it's, you know, not that I knew that off the top of my head. But like reading, I was like, <laughs> 2013. I was like, that's, like we were, like I was smoking cigars in 2013. So, um, you know, talking about off the top of your head. So I've got an interesting little twist on the fun fact today. But real quick, first, I'm going to pimp out the shirt that I'm wearing. So this is one of our new shirts that um, if it's, it should be for sale at cedarculture.com by the time this video goes live. But if not, it will be soon. Um, super dope. If, um, you know, if you're listening, go check us out and check the video out on the YouTube. Um, check out our Instagram. Uh, we've got a bunch of cool shirts dropping really soon. But anyway, the cool fact stuff. So, okay. All right, so we were supposed to record this a few days ago, and the fact I had, so that was actually, that day we were supposed to record was Carl Weathers' birthday. No way. Yeah, and so the fun little fact that I was going to have is that when he was auditioning, he didn't feel like he was doing very well in his audition. And For what movie? Oh, sorry, for, for uh, Rocky. Okay. And so he didn't feel like, he, he felt like he wasn't doing that great in his audition. They had him keep going over and over again. And, you know, in those auditions, they have you kind of bounce lines off of somebody. Somebody plays the other part. Mm -hmm. And uh, Carl Weathers goes, he goes, well, I'd do a whole lot better if I had a professional actor with me here. And that person that he was actually doing lines with was Stallone. And that's why he got the role, because he had, like, that really grit and attitude. Wow. <laughs> that cocky attitude got no him the shit. role. Yeah. So if I had a professional actor here to do lines with. Well, I mean, nothing for nothing. You hear Sebastian Stallone You hear Stone him, talk, and you look at him. him. He's tiny. You wouldn't think in your head that he's... They're going to be the star Jack, of a boxing yeah. movie. So, yeah. Um, but anyway, so, 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 hon, this is just the beginning. So, um, yeah, so that's kind of interesting in itself. But now that, you know, we moved, like we're recording today instead, um, it's not Carl Weathers' birthday anymore. So I was like, I need a new factoid for today. Whose birthday is it today? It's Betty White. It's Betty White's 99th birthday today. Did wow, you know I do not. So January 17th. So then I was like, well, I need a Betty White fact then. Okay. So I Googled and... Dude, I thought I would have like my pick of the litter on Betty White facts. Like she's just sort of that like edgy humor and was like before her time. With she was edgy pretty humor. smoking back she in her day. She was smoking and edgy back in the day. Smoke, smoking. Smoke. Well, she right? was edgy though, and like so. So I'm thinking there's got to be like yeah. scandalous stuff. Like maybe she like had sex with JFK or something like that. She probably did. She probably did, right? So I looked, dude. I found a few different sites with Betty White facts, but they were all like very vanilla and boring, plain like facts. Golden Girl facts. Kind of. And so I had to do a, a even special twist, and this is a huge buildup for a fact that's not that interesting, but it's kind of interesting. Okay. So she's 99 years old. That means she was born January 17th of 1922. You say it that way, it's kind of crazy, like how early she was born. Right. So now the fun fact, though, is that just days before Betty White's seventh birthday. Seventh? Yes. Just okay. days before Betty White's seventh birthday is when Wyatt Earp died. Holy Doesn't that blow your shit. fucking mind? Wyatt Earp died uh, January, it was like the 13th, I think, of 1929. And to tie it in, Earp had to be a cigar guy. I would hope. Yeah, he definitely was. But anyway, the, yeah, but so, so anyway, that's the kind of fun fact because a lot of people, I like that. Uh, whenever anything goes back to like really early 1900s, I always bust that out for comparison, the Wyatt Earp thing. Because, That's a great one. Because it's like, you, you just, he's Old West. He's like, he was like an out, not an outlaw, he's a law guy, but gambler in the Old West. I love those old facts. Like, I, I don't know if this is accurate or not, but I've seen the one that's like Anne Frank and Martin Luther King Jr. were born the same year. And you're like, what? Like, it just boggles wow. your mind. Um, weird Carl Weather tie it in. Mm -hmm. I saw an interesting fact. 
when he and Ar when uh, they were filming Predator, mm -hmm. Arnold, obviously cigar aficionado, sticks in between takes, morning, noon, night. The guy has always got a stick in his mouth. Yeah, and Carl does. Weathers was not like about it. He was like, dude. So I believe still I believe um, uh, the, that he got a box sent to him. I think that um, why am I <laughs> blanking on names? Um, <clears throat> Stallone. No. I mean, uh, Schwarzenegger. Schwarzenegger. I, was, I had Stallone on the <laughs> yeah. brain. Schwarzenegger sends him a box, and he, like, falls in love. And then from then on became, like, an oh, avid yeah. cigar smoker. Huh. Which was, like, really cool. Like, like, he didn't start in his young, like, you know, what, how old was he during Predator? He had to be at least in his late 30s, uh, early 40s. Maybe. Maybe younger than I was when starting to well, that's cigars. that's true, too. I don't know. Yeah. But from going, like... Like so, we always talked about like spreading the seed and like seeing how like imagine doing a shoot with well, I mean, I, I think when you talk about that, then when you talk about like you know when you talk about stories of kind of spreading the seed, and then really the cool part of the story is imagine you're Carl Weathers who, you know, when when somebody asks him, hey, how did you get into cigars? He says like, oh, Arnie got me into them, yeah, right? <laughs> like, which is cool. That's kind of funny. Um, so that was my tie into your Carl Weathers factoid yeah. from a few days ago that led to Betty White. But and all this. my mind went down a rabbit hole because <clears throat> I was thinking how, you know, whenever anything, you know, comes up when, that's talked about from early, early 1900s, I always bust out that Wyatt Earp fact because it is interesting that you think old, old West, but like there's an overlap. Right. And because I think it just draw it shows how young our country is. Yeah. That like somebody that died like in 1929 was like an old West kind of outlaw gunman thing. Um, but then when my, when my mind started going is because we are so young and in theory our country has like far more history ahead of it than it does behind it. Mm -hmm. So then I was thinking, you know, things that are staples of America today, like, like the NFL, like football games. Right. Well, like you just kind of imagine, like you can't imagine <clears throat> an announcement tomorrow, them saying like, hey guys, it's been a good run, but the NFL is done. So you just kind of imagine it's going to be there forever. But then well, what's, what's football going to look like in 300 years? Right. What will like, like we'll, we'll be playing ball. different planets? Right. Like different planets will be playing each other for the the intergalactic football league. Like well, I what will, how... three think about three hundred years. Elon Musk wants to put people on Mars like next week. Is he, well, he goal? wanted to do it years ago. <laughs> like his, like, so. Um, well, I always thought it was very arrogant of us as a as the United States of saying that we're the world champions of a sport that we only play. <laughs> like, like, I do think talk, that's kind of funny. Talk about like typical American arrogance. Yeah, <laughs> like, that that personifies yeah, it. I know. Hey, we're the world champ. Oh, you guys don't play this sport at all. Like, it doesn't even exist <laughs> yeah. in your country. Yeah. Oh wait, no, it does exist, but it's called like it's, <laughs> yeah. you call it, but it's a completely different thing. We we bastardized it and then said we're the world yeah. champions. That's like if you and I thumb wrestled right now and I lost and I was like, well. In thumb wrestling, like losing's good, so I beat you. I'm the best that's ever been. What's this like, game called? I win. From that big daddy. So um, the other thing that um, good leather off this stick, by the way, dude. Man. It's I love I love their cigars. I've liked all of their cigars that I've had. This one is is a good staple. What I like with this one is I think would you I would consider this a good um, cigars 102 stick. I agree so, so wholeheartedly. Maybe you don't give it to somebody as their first first cigar. But once once they decide that they are like, oh, okay, I kind of like this. Down the boutique like, rabbit hole. Yeah, this is a great. Which for me, it was a gateway into it because I won like two fivers mm -hmm. and like back to back in the group. And so of I the same or different? Two of these salvations. Okay. Yeah, two five, <clears throat> fivers of this. So, um, but any, so so the MSRP is like ten bucks, mm -hmm. but they're ten. I noticed they were kind of on sale everywhere for like about nine bucks a stick if you buy like a five pack. So, and you can get well, them it's not online. Cheap. Like even though it's a boutique stick. Like the they're big readily chains available. Have them. Like well, they're the readily big. available. I, I see them in a lot of brick and mortars too, at least around here in Jersey. Um, so they're pretty readily available. They're not cheap by any means, but they're not, you know, twenty dollars a stick. I was gonna say for a boutique so stick, a good, I think it's kind of right on par for that good, nine, ten dollar. Exactly. It's it's a it's, so it's a good. You want to, you know, kind of <clears> step up to that next level kind of cigar. Um, I like the when pepper. I, I think that I had from the beginning went away for me for the most part. I was just gonna say like mine, like I, I had like sweet leather in that first inch or two, and now I'm starting to get. But um, I read a characteristic note. Maybe it's because you retro hail. You're getting the uh, <laughs> more enlightened notes than I One know. of the enlightened notes that I read on this stick, which I've never seen anywhere else, is they said charred wood. Which I thought was an interesting note to smoke something that's a plant that's on fire. <laughs> like, you know, you're going to get some char or something. But maybe some of that spice is that char. And it's not spice. It's, it's charcoal or yeah. char or whatever you want to call it. But... Um, I'm really enjoying, like, obviously we're only like an inch in, but uh, 
ask some people that I've spent some time with that first inch is important. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, so, dude, I'm drinking. Um, I was just telling you, but obviously you tried it and you loved it. But I started this thing where I take a coffee-flavored protein powder, mix it with a little iced coffee. Um, Game because, changer. Because I'm, you know, we're both kind of hitting that New Year's resolution. I'm counting macros. You're back on keto. And for me, I just want to report, and I'm kind of going to be using our recording days as a way to keep me accountable. I think I said that last week too. But it's a good so way to be honest. I'm like, I'm, I'm firmly like one full week into counting macros. I've been so strict, and I've gained a pound. So it's not going great so far, but, um, but that pound I feel could good. Be... I know I feel I feel really good, and um, like my like honestly, my poops are good. Like I'm I'm like a, my body's starting to function better, which I think is a good first step in the diet. And we'll, we'll dial those macros in, probably lower them a little bit in sure. a week or two, and, and I'll start <clears> dropping some LBs. But so far, so good on the diet. And for you, too. Um, yeah, I've only had, like, one kind of cheat day. It was my anniversary last uh, yesterday. So, oh, not just mine. My <laughs> wife and I's 11th anniversary. It's nice so of you to include her. We, uh, we went to lunch, and um, we kind of got a little pizza. And, and um, you know, so I wasn't crazy off of it, but was definitely off it. But um, no, you know, um, like I said, that's really going to be my only, yeah. my only vice is like that monthly slice of pizza. Or two. Do you think you're going to go, you had lost a ton of weight in 2020. That was the name of the game in 2020. And you never really had a goal in mind. I remember asking you kind of halfway through the year, what was the goal? And you're like, I'm just going to kind of keep going. Do you think uh, the name of the game in 2021 is, 2021 is going to be to keep losing or to just kind of now make this firmly entrenched in your lifestyle? I think it's going to just be that's, it's always going to be like my baseline and then I'll yeah. vary from there just from what's available if I'm on vacation, if we're hanging by the pool and it's a nice day. You don't think in, in 2021 order. you're going to be like Mr. Strict to like try to lose a bunch of pounds again? Um, no, because I, I think I found a pretty you're good, happy. I think I found a pretty good um, spot balance, where my body balance. balance and that where my body feels comfortable like I didn't stop keto but I definitely went off the strictness of it right and um, so I think my body kind of gained like 12 13 pounds and it kind of found its sweet spot so now you can have those cheats and not really gain right. weight or if not, like I yeah. know like hey we're going away like I can hit it hard for two there weeks and probably lose. If you have a wedding pounds. on a Saturday right. night, just go strict, strict keto for five exactly. days. Exactly. And have a good time. That makes sense. Because um, it's a so, much. So I'll be the one that's just kind of miserable suffering. In no, no, no. Because but... I still like you know my daughter bought candy yesterday and like it's I hard. had one or two little pieces and I'm like wow the old me would have finished that bed like not even that's blink good. of an eye. Yeah. So, you know, I said practicing. I think my thing is practicing restraint. Me too. We're learning balance. Last week, so. last week Eric would have would have crushed the candy as well but this week eric is a but rock. doing stuff like that the coffee flavored protein something you enjoy it's sweet it tastes you delicious you know what i'm having for for second dinner tonight What's so, that? so my, my meals are split your first dinner looks meals. banging by the Dude, way the first dinner was really good and it was yeah it was just some rice some chicken breast some avocado sriracha sauce um but so dinner too is some proats like protein oatmeal have you okay. ever made that no all right, so it's basically you take some oatmeal, some protein powder, some like almond milk or skim milk or whatever. Okay. And you kind of make oatmeal. So basically it's oatmeal with protein powder in it, but that's your base. And then you can do all these different flavors. And I found this one, and I've had it before. It's it's a but like kind of butterfinger flavored protein oatmeal. So what you do is you take the the oatmeal, um, some skim milk, some vanilla protein powder. Okay. Then you take PB2 powdered peanut butter mm -hmm. you seen that you mm -hmm. take like a tablespoon of that or so that. and then you take a tablespoon of sugar-free butterscotch pudding mix they have sugar-free butterscotch pudding mix jello yeah oh my god I have to so you take the table so you got a tablespoon of that with a tablespoon of the pb2 like the peanut butter mixed with the skim milk and the vanilla protein powder and the oatmeal and it come and then you put some of the very mini chocolate chips in it mm -hmm. you know which of course like oh how could you have it on a diet well the funny thing is right the way if you were making this not on a diet you'd take a handful of the big chocolate chips and you throw them in there right but what you find when you do this dude you take it's like a tablespoon of mini chocolate chips yeah. so it's like it's nothing it's a f and it's like yeah a few grams of sugar it's not terrible and by having that swirled into this big bowl of the dude it winds up being like it's like 50 grams of protein that i'm gonna have and like that's tons awesome. of fiber and that's what i found like i've you know uh, from from losing like 125 pounds in the last year, um, I've had people at work say, what are you doing? You know, how can I, and, you know, we always say we're not experts in cigars. We're not experts in weight loss or fitness. We just I'm kind of. really an expert in being a human. Uh, we're, not, I'm trying. Not like, we're an trying to be not that. an expert in being a human. 
But I've just kind of found things. I'm like, find something you like and don't try to replace it, but try to like recreate it. You know, so if you like sweets and you like coffee, like boom, that's a perfect snack because it'll be on hand and yeah. it'll, you're less likely to deviate. Well, that's the big thing with this diet too, is planning meals out for days in advance yeah. and having all those building blocks. And so I've kind of got these different meals that I can construct. That's so nice. I've got variety in that I've got like, you know, eight different building blocks and I can do like eggs with this different kind of lean meat with the, you know, yep. this, that, whatever. All right. So I forgot we like, we're kind of pretty far into this episode. I wanted to bring this up earlier, but something to think about and kind of go back to throughout this episode. So obviously Alex Trebek passed away like a good month or so ago, but just a couple weeks ago, uh, the last episode that they had recorded had aired. Yeah. And so the question is, who's going to replace them? And so somebody on the radio the other day was just talking about like, what would be a good, who would be a good replacement? And a few different people called in with different ideas. But I wanted to ask you, and I actually, you know, normally we just kind of shoot the shit here. And, and of course we still are, but I actually told you I was going to ask you this. Right. That way you could try to get a couple in your head. And so um, I'm going to kick off with a funny one. And we'll just kind of say one and then we'll talk about other stuff and, and we'll throw out, you know, throughout the episode, we can throw out random people. I've got one that I actually think is really, really good. Okay. Um, I'm going to save that though. Okay. So... My, uh, um, so do we start with like a fun one? But no, you can do whatever you want, yeah. Okay. If you have, did you have like, some, yeah, I yeah. had like a one off, like, okay, yeah. So I'll start with a, a, like a fun one, Jerry Springer. Ooh. So, so by a fun one, it's like outside the box, never happened, but he could actually probably do a good job at it. Yeah. So that's why I think it's like a, a good fun one. It's, I like that. It's not just off the wall, like Russell Brand, right? So, I, so I thought of my few that we'll kind of go into, but then as I was, I think, driving here, I was like, oh. I think just from the mustache alone, like Tom, Tom Selleck, Selleck would be a great. <laughs> that's a like, that's a good that's a funny fun one, yeah. You know, like it wouldn't work, but I also think if he did it, he could probably well, do it. You know what, Alex <clears throat> Trebek? You're right. You know what, Alex Trebek was really good at, right? So he's obviously super stoic, right? Kind of dorky, pretty monotone, but he had a sense of humor, and so I think Tom Selleck has that. He's a much deeper, booming voice, yeah. But still has that monotone. Right, and um, he can get the job done, dude. What was that like? Three men and a baby, or two yeah. men and a baby, or yeah. wasn't he in that? Yeah. So, so he's got he's got his comedic chops too. Yeah, he could so that's do That's a it. good one. He was in Friends for a bit. Was he? He was Monica's like older boyfriend for like. Oh, a that's season fun. I was time. never a Friends guy, but somebody on the radio threw one out that was they they meant it kind of seriously, and I think it was a terrible, terrible one, worse than terrible. Um, I really feel like our country did a lot to move past when this person had their, t- their prime, and I can't believe somebody threw their name out to bring them back. I'm nervous that you're going to say someone that's on my like list. Dane Cook. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, his, his... I was like, like, when that person on the radio said that, I was like, dude, like we spent a decade trying to get past Dane Cook, Here's why I and, say and you're no going to bring him back up? Here's why I say no to He's, Dane Cook right off alive? the bat. He's doing something. I think he's dating some like 20-year-old. Mm. Um, that's not saying he just, he's too, like, slapstick goofy, and that's not... He had his day for a minute. No, he man. did have his day for a minute, and, you know, he was a he comedian. He was great at the time. He, he was. For our age, because we were, like, oh, yeah. college age. It was, like, the, we were, we're the that, perfect... We're we were the Dane Cook male, demographic. The, Males, dick dumb, and fart jokes. Like, exactly. Um, uh-huh. Yeah, I wouldn't... I, I mean, he just... He wouldn't give it the, the, the seriousness that it deserves. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, while we're on it, let's give one okay. honest one each. While we're kind of okay. talking about it. Um, I only have a couple, so so I'll, I have one. I have two really good. Honest I think ones. I have two honest good ones. I'm gonna too, save. So I'll, save I'll, those. I'll save my mic drop good one okay. for the end because I think it's gonna be a really good one. Okay. I'll use my other good one now. Okay. I went first before you go. Okay. So I was thinking, who could bring the seriousness? Who has the comedic chops? Who's entertaining? Okay. I went Neil Patrick Harris. Yeah, that's good. I think he would really slam dunk it. The only thing is, I think he's a little too quirky. And he does have a little too show tuney kind of vibe, I think. I get it, but I, don't, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't call him a slam dunk. All right, so here's my number two. Not my best one, but my number two. And I think my number two shits on that number two. Okay. Anderson Cooper. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. If if they were Similar up for it, too. if they were up for it, yeah, Anderson Cooper gets it. I like it. And um, I think Anderson Cooper is very similar to Alex Trebek and he, uh, pretty soft spoken, monotone, but serious, serious, more serious than NPH. Enunciating and good at enunciating. Obviously, tons of screen time and like host type screen time. True. I don't um, know that I could wait. I think we need to like finish this. 
<laughs> okay, then who, who, who's your who's your? Is that okay? Yeah, I yeah, just, yeah. Like, yeah, I wanna, like, yeah. Um, and then we'll, um, if we think of more, like we'll throw okay. them out. But but um, I, who's your who's your? So my kind of I have two, two ties. Okay. I have a tie. Give me them both then, or they're, one of them. And... For an odd reason, they're both from the science world. But I thought Neil deGrasse Tyson would be a really cool. That is a good one. Or Bill Nye the Science Guy. I could see Bill Nye. Um, Again, seriousness. I think, I think he's pretty divisive these days. I th- he pissed off a whole community. I forget well, what community. With he what did like it? the I, I forget science he, versus religion. He was like really not combative, but like he toured the creationist museum and the Noah's Ark thing. And did he? Uh, yeah, I knew. I knew. He did got, a couple debates, but. I mean, he's a scientist, so what's his... But isn't he not a scientist? Isn't that part of it? Like, he kind of got into science later, but wasn't he more... Like, I don't know. I don't know his credentials. I know he's a science guy. Yeah. (laughs) Like, I think he's more of a science guy than, like, Mr. Wizard. Mr. Mr. Wizard existed around here, right? Like, I I was in New York, yeah. Mr. Wizard was, like, national. Um, yeah, it was on Nickelodeon, right? Yeah. Yeah. Mr. Wizard was like I loved Mr. Wizard. a dude, like a business guy that enjoyed science oh, okay. and just was like, let's just do experiments. See, like that's he what started I, that's like a radio show and then built up. Oh, really? Yeah. Cool little background, Mr. Wizard. I I think I think my favorite of the ones you have said are are Neil. Neil deGrasse Tyson. I think he, he I love his sense of humor. I don't know how he would do it. He runs the Hayden Planetarium in New York. I can't He's, imagine him doing he it. He does podcasts, I, he does I, I Cosmos, think, he does I all think, those things. Well, I, and I but think, I love everything he does. I, if I had to guess the biggest reason why he couldn't do it would be because of the time commitment. Just right. um having to, but but at the same time they shoot like they they can shoot don't a they whole, do like seventeen episodes I was a gonna day. Say, so they can shoot a whole month and a day kind of thing. So maybe he could. Who knows? All right, so here's my home run. Ready? Mm-hmm. LeVar Burton. Wow. It would be hard to see him up there and not hear the reading rainbow theme in like my head. Fair. <laughs> or but with the glasses. I think I think LeVar Burton has the right amount of recognizability, but not I mean he's pretty far separated from the, the Star Trek thing. Yeah. And so and the reading rainbow thing, you have that nostalgia. So we have a whole demographic of our age and a little older and a little younger that are gonna like him automatically. And it seems like the he's trend intelligent, well spoken. Uh, he is. It seems like the trend is Actors, I don't want to say past their prime, but had their minute like in the sun, their their moment of fame, like are are hosting shows now. Like, that's what you're seeing. Yeah, no, that's definitely Drew true. Carey, um, Alfonso Ribeiro, well, like, Drew all those Carey. Guys. I mean, that's been a long time. You know, he. Was, I remember when they chose him. I was like, what, dude? I still am out on it, but he's been successful apparently. Like apparently, I, I still don't. It doesn't feel right to Just me. Just like Bob Barker to him. You Didn't know what it is? Is um. Nothing against Drew Carey. I love the Drew Carey show. I loved the Drew Carey show, and I love the one whose line is anyway. You know what it is? It's not that I have a problem with Drew Carey on The Price is Right. I still don't like skinny Drew Carey. Mm. I think that's what it is. That makes sense. I mean... Dude, this stick is really enjoyable. Isn't it? Like, fantastic? for me, not being a Habano guy... Yeah. Like, it's everything that I love in those nuances. The sweet tobacco, the the leathery... But, and you're and the little back... Pa- oh, I get that. Ba- I but I don't even call it, like... Maybe it's the charred wood. <laughs> I don't know, but it's not pepper. It's 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 like this back ended finish. The smoke's nice too. Like it's nothing like a Drew Estate kind of crazy smoke bomb, but it's got it's just like a nice creamy, thick, fair, like balanced, good amount of smoke. Now that you said Ed Hardy and stuff, it's like all I see with the praying it's hands. A at first, more. It's affliction, I think, more. At first I was like, Man, real religious like stained glass window, like that's what it like made me think of. But um I don't know. we, we like all nuances of the stick the feel the artwork the the bands like we we appreciate those mm-hmm. kind of things so I mean, maybe he was a bit like i'd love to see pictures of james brown uh maybe he was like rocking the affliction stuff or the ed hardy stuff you know uh, check him out um i think we follow him on instagram mm-hmm. yeah check him out you'll see um yeah pretty cool looking dude hand tats that kind of you know the whole what's night. his age oh, ish you, um, I don't know. I mean, I've definitely seen pictures of him. I just can't remember because all of his pictures, for the most part, are actually kind of taken in the first person, like looking down. Okay. Like, so like it kind of looking down at his hands and like he, he always has like cool shoes on. That's cool. Um, yeah, he's got a, he's, he's got a, a cool. Tough swag, name to live up to. I mean, your name is James Brown. I know. <laughs> you gotta be like. He's born cool. I know. Uh, you know. A lot I feel like I was than like, Eric Allen. I was going to say, if, if I was born James Brown, I'd be like, Sorry, everybody. Yeah. This is the I best was born to be like an accountant or or uh, all pro cornerback. That's all I got. <laughs> um, um, do you remember like so? The last time you smoked this, do you remember like? 
Do you remember the, the I'm trying to help you pass your uh, your your, your My taste amnesia? amnesia, yeah. Jesus Christ. Where you'll be like, so, I liked it. <laughs> I, I would have told you that I thought I remember this being more spicy. However, I will say that the last time I had them, like I said, I, I got into them kind of all at once when I first got the cigars because I won a, a couple fivers. And so it was a lot newer in my journey. And so um, maybe it, maybe I did perceive it as more spicy than I do now. Um, I'm, I'm not really sure. But but I love it still. But no, it's, um, it's really good. I, I don't kind of remember it being like this. It makes me want to kind of venture further down the line. I have a few. They're not the ones that I like have recently been pulling for. But I have more in my humidor, so like I'm excited to that I have them. You know. Yeah. Um, because in my head, I don't know why I characterize them all as spice bombs, and, and not that I don't love spice bombs, but they have their place and time for me. Like they're not. Dude, they're not you hear something crazy? It's actually not that crazy. What if you're just like, ah! But, <laughs> <laughs> so, I remember how I won that five pack of the special COVID edition Daughters of the Wind. Mm -hmm. So when they came in, you know, and I knew that it was. Did they be, say COVID on it? No, so when they came in, I knew they weren't going to be in the pack because they, you know, they had broken down like a, a box of 20 or something and I won a five pack, so that's fine. But when the fiver came in, the labels were exactly the same as the regular Daughters of the Wind. Right. And so I was like, crap, did he maybe send me the wrong ones? Like, whatever. Mm -hmm. And so I Googled it. And what I found is that the only thing COVID addition about it. Size? No, it's worse. They had a supply chain issue with their packaging. And so the box that it came in was just a plain box that said COVID edition on it because it didn't have the full branded box. The cigar is exactly Which the same. you would have no recollection I of. I have no the, idea, no way to know that. And it's, that's the thing with it. That's why I don't really do many of the raffles anymore because something comes out. Like if it looks exciting, you, right. don't, you, you don't even have time to research it because the raffle is going to fill really quick. Mm -hmm. Don't get me wrong. I'm not knocking it. Like I love it. It, it like fast tracked our knowledge of cigars. And like I'm really not talking smack on it. And it got us into brands but we it's would what have got never me, gotten into. You know, kind of that whole feel and that excitement and adrenaline is what really got me into the group. Right. And it's kind of what also, I think, led for me to be done with those raffle groups, at least for a while. Because when I'm doing that, uh, you know, you get all excited for these cigars. You jump in the raffle. It's limited COVID edition. Oh, this is going to be great. And you find out, oh, the label is different. Actually, the label is So the tobacco, different. like nothing about the stick is different? No. Interesting. Yeah, it's kind of stupid. <laughs> Where are you at? I'm like, i got to take my label off already. Yeah, have I been talking a lot? I'm just enjoying the hell out of this, dude. So keep talking. I'm like, dude, I'm smoking this. This is good. Oh, well, I got to catch up. <clears throat> tell me a joke. Tell me a joke. Um, I can tell you a terrible joke my dad just told me. So he said, two guys meet. <laughs> he goes, hey, Gary, check out this joke I, I made. <laughs> and he shows you a mirror. <laughs> oh, he made me, so yeah, I'm the exactly. joke. Exactly. You got it. You got the joke. <laughs> See? So uh, two buddies... Uh, from the backwoods section of South Jersey, meet up in the in the city, and one's walking out of a donut shop with a bag of donuts. And he's like, "Hey, man, what do you got in the bag?" He's like, "I bought some donuts." He's like, "Man, I wish I could have one." He's like, "I'll tell you what, if I can guess how many donuts are in your bag, would you give me one?" He goes, "I'll make you a bet. If you can guess how many donuts are in my bag, I'll give you both of them." <laughs> my dad dad's joke so. that's a good gary senior that was for you and matches your shirt <laughs> oh that's right dad bod i want one that says walking dad joke or something or oh uh, yeah you know. maybe we can speaking of know. joke do you know like our the running our running club still gets like traction on facebook so you know does it or does it not no you know what facebook they because they try to lure us back to that page mm -hmm. so so we had we we had a um yeah, Gary. A running club? Our, our combined, <laughs> with the tag team, with, with a combined weight of 736 pounds, <sighs> we're in a running club together. Um, and uh, yeah, called The Running Joke, which is a dope name for a running club. The I'll running never joke. forget that. Was that Brian? Day. Did Brian come up with that? No, I did. Did you? We were at the diner before the Tough Mudder. Yeah. And our buddy Keith is talking. He's like, well, we have this long running joke. We have this long time running joke. And I was just like, that's us. We're the running joke running club. And at the we're time, were we people. trying to think of names? Or, or did that just lead to the club? No, we were like, it was at the time we were kind of branching away from the gym we were working we, we at. Need, we wanted a way to stay together. We were like, we got to all stay together and work out. Do you run. remember I got like all your social security numbers and stuff and I made like a non-profit? Mm -hmm. Like, I, I guess that still exists. I don't know what happens to, literally. Like, let's I, keep it going. Let's, let's revamp it in 2022. Jesus Christ. <laughs> 
We didn't We're not going through anything, right? You're going. not. You're not, yeah. you're not starting a business. I'm not keep potentially purchasing a new house. We never, like, we never got crazy. going. They were cool shirts. We had a cool logo. We had cool yeah. shirts. The, uh, the running joke, RJRC. Like the whole thing was cool. Oh, but anyway, so what Facebook does is they try to tempt us to come back. So we'll get notifications. It'll be like, like running joke, running club has one new like this week, right? That's what you're talking about. You get those but does notifications. It? When I go click on it and actually click the notification, and you go look at like our like, like we haven't we haven't had a like. So then why do they say? Can they like legally but say to, that? To try to leave. It's just it's the wild west, man. It's Facebook. Look at my. Why am I so? Wait, look at me. That's why you're done so much further in your cigar. Half of it's on the table. I'm like an ashy mess. Um, it's but yeah, man, the whole DJ name. Ashy mess. DJ Ashy mess. Dude, the whole uh, DJ Dad Bod Trebek thing is just sad, man. Like how you know, like, and he saw how obviously in the in the eye of. I mean, the, he essentially went out doing what he loved. What he loved, right? Like he, he worked until the end. And he had and written, he, I think, and he wasn't young. No, and no, um, he wasn't. It was cancer, though, so you know, it was premature, right? right? But, but um, I don't know. I, I mean, it's definitely, obviously, anytime anybody dies, it's sad. But but I don't. It's uh, he lived a good life. He had, he had a good, he had a good, good gig, man. What about Ryan Seacrest? Would he be a written that? Like, I Ryan think he would, be the, he would be the commercial. He could do anything. He'd be the commercialized replacement. I'm, I mean, he's yeah. in everything too. Like he, he you know what? I don't think he could do that because he's the new Dick Clark. So you can't be both Dick Clark and Alex Trebek. That's just that's too much for any man <laughs> to live up to. Oh my God. I saw Alex Trebek. I didn't see him. I read that um, he was either journaling a lot or, or kind of he, he wanted to be in much more control. I think anyone in that situation would understand that. Who? Alex Trebek. Okay. Like in his late last days, you know, just grasping for control. And he was like, if, if, if I could have my perfect last day, it would be sitting on a bench with my wife and like looking over the horizon. And that's what they did. Did like, they? Yeah. Like I think when they realized like this, like mm-hmm. we're getting towards the end. That's that's what they did. They spent their last day looking over the the horizon. Wow. So, sad. That is sad. That's so, so, sorry, everyone. That just, yeah. I just bummered everybody out. Um, My bad. Something happy. We're gonna go into something. Ryan Seacrest. All right. <laughs> so, uh, Ryan Seacrest Inc. So, takes over the world. Right, Ryan so, Seacrest hosted with Johnny Dunkelberg or whatever his name was. Remember there were two oh, hosts. Yeah, yeah. Of, so, can so, you imagine uh, he became Ryan Seacrest? The like he's everybody. And, you mean, and the other guy, if I'm not mistaken, he like he chose to leave American Idol, I think, or I, I can't remember. But all right, so so then you know I like we like doing like tie-ins or random tie-ins when something comes up. So so Dick Clark came up. So um, this is terrible. A little insight into a terrible dad joke that I invented. Okay. okay. So sometimes right, like if I start like. You know, texting with a girl or whatever, and like make the girls like to laugh, right? Make girls laugh. They like that shit, right? And so, um, I've done this a couple times where like I'll text a girl a picture of Dick Clark, and they'll, they'll be like, "What? Like, what's this or whatever?" And I'd be like, "I hear that's how you win girls over. Send them a dick, dick pic. pic." That's pretty good. That's pretty good. That's Dude, really it good. It gets it, cracks them up. It's good. My favorite dad joke. It's like one of the when when it happens. No matter what's going on in my life, it puts me in a happy mood. If I'm at a restaurant or wherever and I'm out with the family and on rare occasion I don't finish my food and a waitress <laughs> comes and says, do you want a box for that? I go, no, but I'll wrestle you for it. <laughs> Where it's, did you get that from? I heard someone, I was just like, it's the it's the ultimate dad saying. Do they get it or sometimes are they the, like, like I, I get this, 99% of the time I get, I get the, <laughs> the confused to like, you that's rascal! Like, that's face. one of those jokes that because I'm also in control of their tip, so like true. they have to be like that is clever. It's one of the jokes that like if they don't get it though, they're like this big man asked to wrestle me. Like this is really weird. True. So <laughs> it's like, funny, but though. I will never say it alone. Like I have to be careful because waitress is like 18 to 22 years old. Exactly. That's what I mean. Maybe I'm like creep, but yeah. if my wife and three kids are there, they're like yeah. he's just an idiot. Yeah. He's a... I've noticed that if I'm like. I could be an imposing figure, kind of, yeah. if you don't know who I am. I've noticed when I'm walking down the street by myself, completely different than if I'm walking down the street with I'm my sure. kids. Like, like people like go into the other I'm side I'm being 6'4", 6'5", 300 pounds-ish. I'm always like conscious, like don't follow people too too close, especially women yeah. by themselves. Like I try not to anyway. Like just it's it's a like, good habit to, to. It's a good habit. Like I, I've noticed. Um, yeah. So so like if I'm leaving a grocery store and you you, you know you wind up in one of those situations right where you're you you just happen to be like three feet behind some woman and you must be parked next to each other like 70 cars at the end of the road and so yeah you're, you're just Always. walking like three feet behind her it does get awkward i will try to like go to the other side 
Or I've done it before where like I'll even stop because I just know like that probably makes Give them, them feel space. so much more comfortable. Give them space. Um, I think it's the right thing to do. Now, the one thing I've noticed 100% of the time is no one is afraid to ask me if I'm by myself or whatever to reach something high. Like if I'm at a grocery store and That's it's just funny. me, yeah. I guess because it's the public, they're like, do you mind reaching for that? And it's usually an older woman, smaller older woman. And... I think the, the tall guy code is you always have to say yes. So well, of course. Was, imagine if I was like, no. <laughs> like, what a jerk. <laughs> like, like, be taller. <laughs> just be taller. Be <laughs> more able-bodied. What the hell is wrong with you? But, um, yeah, it's interesting. Any other, good, any other good dad jokes? No. I'm not a good... Um, you know what's weird? I, just, you know, I have a really good memory for random stuff that I don't try to remember. But same thing as like you know recalling like plots for movies yeah. or recalling jokes, recalling the flavor of a stick. You know, I can generally tell you if I like the stick or not, but I can't tell you any specifics. I just I have no no recall for jokes. Brains are just it's amazing. Like, and I'm the same way. Like, I can't tell you directions. I can tell you landmarks, and usually I've learned it because I've missed the turn or I you know it's right. just the way my brain's wired. I I don't know. I don't even know directions anymore. People are like GPS, you know I head know. head west, like head towards the mountains. I'm like, am I gonna see the mountains? Like, what do you mean? Like <laughs> the ocean? Go like, what west. are you talking about? King of wishful thinking. There you go. <laughs> But no, really, really enjoying this stick. I'm, I'm about at the halfway point. So eh. You're more than the halfway point. You're past the band. My band seemed a little like, I, look. You put, think your band was lower than mine, maybe? Maybe, because you're only about a quarter of an inch more if you knock that ash off. I'll knock your ash off. Knock your ash off. Tap what's your what's ash. yeah? What's your take on like cigar nomenclature when people are like, dude, nice ash, and <laughs> stuff like that? Like, how I do you? I can tell you. Being in cigar groups on Facebook is enough to make you never want to go on Facebook anymore. I can tell mm. you that. Like every You're not day, allowed to have an opinion. <laughs> every well, it's And not you're never that. allowed to have a problem with a stick. Well, I'm not God even forbid. That. No, I'm not even talking about that. I'm talking about it's like every other day, you know, somebody will post a, a picture of a cigar with two inches of ash. And then you'll get ten people commenting like, oh, there's you a paper, put a paper clip. clip in there. And then somebody else will comment with a picture of the time they had three inches of ash and they're like people wouldn't understand like jealous i'm like why does any of this matter fucking social media like and then, follow us on instagram though and facebook and social media <laughs> but and i also too. don't think Subscribe, we try to inundate with how it's supposed to be done i think we're the the kind of guys you want us you 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 join in or tune in to hear because we have our opinion but we also want you to have yours like, of course. We don't love the same st- – we, we do. For we, I think we have similar no, I, palettes. For, but apparently you and I have like whatever the pepper gene is. One of us has it and the other one doesn't because every time you taste pepper, I don't. And when I taste pepper, you don't. So that's kind of funny. And But that's part of the – And they're not the wrong. Thing. None of it's wrong. No, no. Because I think we interpret pepper a little differently too. Like you know, mm-hmm. maybe one of us sees it as more something, something else interprets it as something else. Like, I and I like know. that you use the word interpret. And what – what like leads me down that is like I'm colorblind, right? So, so you can't taste pepper for shit. <laughs> but it's it's all how it's perceived. Like I remember when I, <clears throat> my wife and I first bought the house, the house we're currently in, we were looking at colors and I was like, wow, just looking at paint samples. And I was like, this is beautiful. She's like, that's purple. <laughs> I was like, but it looks like whatever reason, like that looked, it was like eggplant. She's like, we're not painting our bedroom eggplant. <laughs> I was like, so I have to paint it for someone else to look at? Like it made me feel good. Like I liked it. That would be so, awesome if your bedroom was like traffic cone orange <laughs> because that to you looks good. But so why I even brought that up is how do we know like you see blue and I see blue that it's the same blue? Like we don't. So just like I our guess. taste, but like it all has to be interpretive and different. Yeah. No, I hear you. And because I retro how, I'll get different He's, nuances. No, but I really, I, I, I'm telling you, it, it was a game changer for me for, for tasting different sticks. I could tell you that. Like I don't want to sound bougie or whatever, but... I mean, it's enjoyable. Like, I had a really high-end stick, uh, I think, yesterday as well. I had a couple sticks yesterday, or the day before I had three. Jesus. And uh, so three in January for me was like a it was Dude, a I, went from, I, was so I went from, in the summer, averaging about, um, honestly, I would probably say I, I probably averaged one and a half a day because I would do, I think one day a week I wouldn't smoke any. Like like sometimes on like a Monday I might not have a cigar because I had maybe six on Saturday and six on Sunday or something like that. It's impressive. But, but no, like like something crazy like that. But but I would, 
Uh, honestly, no. On average, I honestly, I would probably one day a week, I wouldn't have a cigar at all. And I would still probably average more than two cigars a day because of yeah. weekends, I would have so many. But now in the winter, I'm averaging less than one a day. I, I will go sometimes. This I'll go some, three days without a cigar. Some weeks, this is the only stick I have. Um, just lucky no. enough. Uh, really? Some some weeks, like really? when we started. But, ha- you know, having that my neighbor and I put a tent up and we yeah. have a little heater in there. I tell you what, if, if you're it's looking for... It's not a fire for, hazard at all. Well, I mean, what, what isn't these days? No. <laughs> these days? These days, with these fire hazards. And but if you're, looking for a che- if you're looking for a cheap way, get a two-person <laughs> little cheapy Coleman no, tent from great. Walmart. Dude, honestly, Set up a chair, a table. We put a little propane um, attachment, and some days we have it open. When it's really cold, we bring it in, and we just make sure it's not near anything. And no, that's smart. And uh, our wives haven't complained about smoking anything. That's, so a, that's a pretty cheap. And I think that whole the whole solution that was just pretty much to solve the fact that your Christmas decorations are in your garage, right? Is that really Christmas and like some of our um, so if you were smoking, summer clothes and stuff, like, right? You know? So you smoke. You, your wife finally was like, "Dude, you can't smoke in the garage. Right. Everything's gonna smell like smoke," which is fair point I, I mean my garage we talk is about balance smell like we talk about yeah. balance. <laughs> my garage is definitely starting to smell a little bit like smoke but i'm pretty hopeful i don't i don't store anything in here i don't have like clothes or, or anything and and i'm pretty hopeful that in the summer once i open the, you know in the summer i keep the door open for pretty much 18 hours a day the garage door yep. and so i think it'll air out we'll be fine but but my buddy so oh so it was a an episode or two ago um, we, we came up with some beginner cigars mm-hmm. yeah, and my friend, I, I sent him the list the next day and, um, a couple of days after that, he texted me, he had the job of a red okay. and, uh, he said he really liked it. Good. And, and uh, but I, I was like, dude, it's like, what do you, how he's in Chicago and it's winter. And he's, he's like, yeah, he's like, you just get used to it. And he, he smoked, he said it was like 25 degrees out. I'm telling you, I, I 25, that's crazy. So if it's like 40 here, I'm no, I talked about wanting to put up like, you know, I posted a couple, I think I was outside in like 29 and 31 with the fire pit out, but I've seen pictures of guys like in Alaska smoking and you're like, how do how do you do that? Like I couldn't put gloves on, like my hands are cold in here. And what's, what do you think? The you know, it's probably here? a cool experience. Um, Having a stick like in an ice fishing hut or something. I was just thinking ice fishing. How cool would that be? That would be cool. Now I guess you that would the little hut would fill with smoke. You, I don't know some kind of ventilation system, but whatever. I don't know, but something figure it out, and that would probably be. An if awesome any of our fans thing. ice fish and smoke, let us know how it works. <laughs> I think. How can we recreate some version of that? That would just be us around a fire. Yeah, that's it really it. would be. That's, and that's which actually is just cold and. But you can't really bring a heat element in there because you're on the ice. You're literally it's just a, it's wood on top of ice, right? Yeah, but I think they have little space heaters in those little things. I'm trying to rem- honestly, my only frame of reference is grumpy old grumpy man. Grumpy old man, yeah. <laughs> That's the only ice fishing. Just finishing breakfast. I'm the guys like drinking in the morning. The old man. a heat wave. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So that's my only frame of reference. I'm literally basing everything I know about ice fishing on. Uh, on uh, Grumpy Old Men. Just like I, everything I know about hockey came from Mighty Ducks. I don't know that I would actively want to go. Like, I would go if we were like, going with friends. Ice but fishing? Yeah, it's got to be. Um, I think my anxiety would have a tr- would have trouble with being on ice. It's got to be con- and confined. Um, the ice is pretty thick, though. Like, when you sure. when you drill, you'll, like, see how thick it is. Yeah, no, I get so, it. I get it. I think my anxiety would be, I would be more worried about the confined space and being over the ice. Yeah. I, yeah, I don't know. I, I mean, I'm sure I would enjoy it. I, I probably, uh, I just, I'm not big into boring sports anyway. So, like, my parents are big hunters, and they got me into hunting when I was young, and I got out of it pretty quickly. Um, I enjoyed, like, squirrel hunting, and, and like, uh, because you're walking around, and you're going to see squirrels. It's, like, kind of fun. Uh, or um, even, like, duck or goose You ever hunting. eat? You ever eat squirrel? Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Boiled yeah. or something? Boil. Isn't that what they do? <laughs> no, my mom would actually do it a lot um, in like a in a red sauce, like uh, like kind of like a stew meat, like chunks. I and wouldn't stew mind trying it. Stuff, yeah. Um, but um, that was fun, or like duck or goose hunting, because you kind of you kind of go out in the water, and it's a certain time of year, and you just know at some point you're going to see them. Deer hunting though was just way too boring, and fishing can get just really boring yeah. for I, me. To me, fishing would be an excuse to smoke a cigar somewhere else, like by a lake. And like that's kind of what I'm picturing cast. with the ice fishing. Ice fishing like, exactly, it would just would, be another I would go, surrounding. Really, I guess I want to go ice cigaring. <laughs> yeah, I want to go ice smoking. That, that's cool. And then, and then um, happen to maybe have a hole in the ice, and, and it, it would be pretty cool. 
Hey, you guys never drilled your ice. Yeah, but we're on stick seven, so we're having a good day. Good catch. <laughs> catch of the day was a black label trading company salvation. Is there an old movie? Was there like a cartoon fish with a cigar in its mouth or something? That wasn't like the Mr. Limpet thing, right? Or like the, like that wasn't the, the Don Knotts thing? Or, or Oh, it was like an old Disney movie. It was like a talking fish, wasn't he? Yeah. Is it like an old school Disney movie? Yeah. Something did he smoke like a cigar? That. I don't know. Like in my head he did, but I, I might. And now I have I Big be... Mouth ba- Billy the Bass in my head now, so yeah, now I don't know. Something. Give me that filet of fish. I don't know. What you just said, I thought of like a cool just question and answer topic. Um, what's the most exotic food you think you've ever eaten? So, I mean, I don't know that many people would eat squirrel. Maybe around South Jersey they might, but like. I dated an Argentinian girl once. I don't know. I'm trying to think. I've had like alligator. I've, I've had, had alligator. alligator. I've had ostrich. I've had ostrich. I've had. Um, I don't know that I've had anything crazy like, like, like. Uh, what's the? Um... I think I've had snake. Have you? I think I I've had snake I've out in had Texas. Snake or not? I don't think I have. I remember liking alligator. Like it was yeah. cubed and fried. Cubed and fried on a stick. And it's very had, like, salty. Down in it's, yeah, really good. Um, I wouldn't want to catch one though, man. You watch those swamp people shows, like that's like work, man. They're shooting alligators in the head. Somebody just got eaten by an alligator on um apparently I was just told by family members. So we we took a family vacation. Um You have up, family on the Louisiana swamp, don't you? Well, I do have family down in Louisiana, but no, with family from up here, we went to um Kiowa Island, like South Carolina or okay. something like that. It's like a really beautiful golf course. And um but it's kind of like out on like by the water and stuff and there's like a little Central. marsh and there's gators and you you walk this little bridge just to get to the beach actually and you see all these gators and we we would walk over that bridge to get to the beach every day and apparently somebody got eaten by an alligator like on that bridge uh just uh, like recently apparently i haven't looked it up but yeah it's kid or adult or didn't look it up at wow. all it, like the whole point of a family member telling me was like hey that bridge we were on where we saw the alligators and took pictures of alligators like somebody got eaten by an alligator on that bridge i remember them doing i imagine they were like I don't know. They probably went down and like tried to like reach their arm down or. You know. Yeah. Don't, I, I don't, don't think do the, that. I'm, I'm hoping the alligator didn't climb on the bridge. That would be really scary. I don't want to go back. The last thing I remember hearing that gave me crazy anxiety was the the kid that was at either one of the Disney resorts or whatever. They were doing like a movie night on the beach or something, and like a three year old got like just pulled in the marsh and. Really. And like as a parent, like what do you do? You jump? Like what do you do? I, I mean, I don't know. I don't know. I'm, you know, not being a parent, you know, I don't have that instinct. Like, I, I mean, I know we just saw, you know, there was just a f- couple weeks ago a video of a guy that jumped in um, uh, after his dog or somebody's dog. I don't know if it was his dog. Did you Did see he that? save it? And he saved it. He saved the dog. Um, I, was I it a, a gator or I a snake? I think it was like a python or something. Are you sure? Did I something get, I remember them uncoiling, but I could be thinking of another I, I Yeah, I feel like I remember him getting it out of the mouth. Uh, of the alligator or something. Yeah, you know what? You're right because I remember going. I thought it was almost virtually impossible. Like you can, they had their. You can keep them close. Small one. It had to be a small one because if you think about it, it was a small dog. Okay. And so the mouth was only over the torso of the small dog. So it's okay. probably a small alligator, but still. And I actually don't know. I assume the dog lived, but I don't know how. How do you? I, I don't know how any of that happened. And the guy was chest deep in this water. So how did he get away from the alligator, not coming back after him? Right. The whole thing's messed up. I don't know, man. But but to answer your question. That guy did it for a dog, so I guess somebody would do it for the kid. But I, I don't know. I don't want to. This has been like a downer. <laughs> Be in that situation. <laughs> yeah. I'm not out for back time. <laughs> Kids getting eaten by alligators. We're getting put kind of towards the end here too, so we need to <clears throat> um, to to liven it up a little. Bit okay. <laughs> here for the end. Well, I'm going to tell you for a stick that you were stoked to smoke, which I'm glad we do, because usually I'm the one sitting here going, "I can't wait to try this. I've been excited." <laughs> I have enjoyed the hell out of this so Good. far, and it's definitely one that I'm glad that I have a few more of, and I'm glad that I have more uh, from from uh, James Brown and the whole. Uh... So what what's the parent company? Oveja Negra. Okay. Um, and that's the sheep logo. Yep, black cool. sheep. So um, I guess you, you know, say I, it very well. Like you pronounce Oveja Negra. You, you, like it doesn't sound like a white dude trying to say like a Spanish <laughs> word. You do you do you do it justice. La Oveja Biblioteca. <laughs> um, so, uh, I, you know what, I guess I, I didn't get to tell you about it. I stopped in a, um, the new shop. I traded you some sticks that I got from there. But it was kind of interesting, a new shop. I just stumbled on around the corner from where I'm hoping to put my, my Poe franchise. That's awesome. Um, I don't really have any updates on that right now. Still just location searching. But, but yeah, so I stopped in the new brick and mortar. And it was interesting. Um, I'll say the one thing that I, I found kind of interesting was their selection wasn't very big. 
but it was very different than a lot of the other shops that we've been to in the area. So, sure, it's like they, alcohol; they get different stuff and well, different yeah, vendors. Well, yeah, well, because they just, there's so many cigars now, the shops can only carry some brands. Right. But they were like, do they had maybe a couple acids and I think like a, a couple Kentucky Fire Cured, and that was about it for Drew Estate. Wow. No Dunbarton. So. Um, I think they had like one or two of these black label sticks and that was it. It was just an interesting contrast to, hmm. you know, like if you live in our world, you would think that every shop has about 50% Drew Estate and right. not 50%, but most shops, at least you, a go quarter, to, at least most shops you go to in this area too, like there'll be at least a whole section of a wall that's Drew Estate. So it was just kind of interesting. Because well, Drew Estate goes so shop. deep with like what they have. So it only has Yeah, it's just the, so wide. Yeah. But I could see acids being like, you know, the big one. My buddy um, got, I guess from his mother-in-law, a travel humidor. One of the um, cans. Mm -hmm. They're like he, the acrylic jars. Acrylic jars. His was like leather wrapped and it was, you know, yeah. it was nice. But he actually texted me today and he had a whole bunch of acid Cuba Cubas and he was like, hey man, should I leave the plastic on the sticks or... And I was like, if you're putting them in there, I would keep the cellophane on. That's another layer of protection. I said, yeah, I don't not? think there's any rhyme or reason, but you only got like Speaking five sticks, humidor, put it in there. <laughs> so like I, I've talked, I think a little bit before about how my humidor is not great. And now being the winter, with just such a lower humidity in the house in general with the heater running. Dude, I'm like, my, I'm sucking through Boveda packs. Like, I'm going through like four big 72 packs a week almost. Yeah. Like, sucking through them. So, I'm, I'm just converting everything to Tupperware now. It just seals better. And, and I was telling you, I'm actually going to get rid of my humidor. Well, eventually, as I get enough Tupperware, I get everything <coughs> for it. It's going to be, like, it doesn't present as well. It's kind of ugly um, compared to a nice wooden humidor. Yeah. But at the end of the day, you can label all your Tupperware, have it's all a better the, organization system. I'll tell better you. Better organization system will know exactly what's where, you know, and keep it, all your keep stuff the together perfectly. I bought a piece of cedar, cut up little strips of it and put it in. I think, yeah, that's, that's, and, and you know what? Somebody else that's in one of the groups that we're in together, a guy mm -hmm. that, that we know that we both kind of respect, is, knows his shit when it comes to cigars, and he was saying he does Tupperware. Like, yeah. just what he does. It's I've seen guys, especially with storage. Like, um, I got a couple box, not that I'm hurting for sticks, but a brand that I really like, they don't make it anymore. I stumbled upon a guy that had a few boxes. He had a store. We struck up a deal. So I have these boxes that, that for the first time, I don't plan on opening. So that's where something I'm going to get a, a small Tupperware that fits really just those two boxes. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if I'll do Bovida or maybe that's where I'll do like <laughs> distilled water or those the gel crystals or something where I'm not going to really mess with it a lot. And I don't want to have to Bovida it all the time. Yeah. They make those gelatins. I mean, if it's sealed from, really well and the sticks are the right humidity. You're not opening it. And you're not lot, opening hopefully. it. Bovida packs are perfect. They'll just last kind of forever. I hope so. Right? Because if you have a Bovida in a Ziploc, it'll last kind of forever. They come sealed in plastic and they last a really long time. Right. If it's in a good, it's just for me with because the air, like my, my humidor doesn't hold air very well. So I'm just sucking through these Bovida packs. Another thing you could my think of. My sticks are all dry. Like that's another reason to go to Tupperware. I'm like 10 percentage points low like on humidity. It's terrible. Maybe winter do like a soaked sponge in there if you keep the humidor, you know, and then summer you can go back to Bovida. But yeah. It's okay, like, I'm just going to Tupperware. Yeah. Yeah. It's just stores better. You can, I can, you can say that the humidor is beautiful. You could do boxes in there if you wanted to. I might do something like that. Keep your full boxes in there and then yeah, the others elsewhere. It is elsewhere. nice looking, so. All right, bud, let's, uh, let's wrap her on up here, yeah? Nothing that, nothing's changed here for me. I don't think we need to go back through the, the, the paces on the stick. No. We've talked about that enough. Um, appreciate everybody uh, sticking with us here for always. another episode. Always great smoking with you, bud. And uh, as always, long ashes. Stay smoky, everybody. Thanks for checking out the Cedar Culture Podcast. If you would like that episode, go ahead, tap, like, follow, subscribe, whatever it is on your platform of choice. And if you are on YouTube, hit that bell as well to be notified of new episodes. It really helps us out. We appreciate it. And then don't forget to head over to Instagram and Facebook and follow us as well. Do it. Do it.